Okay. Amazing. Great. So thank you very much, uh, Sagi, for joining, for agreeing to do the webinar. Um, I was very excited to see how you kind of developed this product yourself. And it's like it really fits into kind of our ethos of supporting kind of colleagues and stuff as well. Uh, so we're really happy to kind of be promoting something that's actually designed by an endodontist for a, a specific clinical needs that a lot of people struggle with. It's um, I think it's one thing that I think hopefully we'll be able to get a better idea of today is how to deal with kind of wide apical foramens because technically they can be so tricky to deal with. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you approach your cases, any tips and tricks you can share with us and, uh, and just your whole take on this kind of tricky kind of clinical complication that we come up against. Thank you. Thank okay. you. You want to introduce how you came up with the concept and it's like all your kind of rationale for using it. Yeah. I mean, um, I had the, the um, map system, which I wasn't very happy with uh, for various reasons. It just didn't work for me. So what I did, I started creating my own uh, silicone, uh, through a silicone, uh, small pellets. Yeah. But again, it, it didn't work as well. So I decided to do something about it okay i uh, my I, I never liked mta to start with uh so i used bioceramic throughout and biodentin throughout my uh, my practice yeah and um, basically one day i sat down uh, with my wife she's also a dentist and we started sketching things and i explained to her how what, what i'm trying to do and and so on and so forth so this is how we came with this uh, uh, instrument, which is very, very similar to your um, our Miller forceps that you yeah. call them. I think the articulate, you know, the articulating yeah. paper. Uh, it's very similar, uh, and you know, that that's how it came about, really. Yeah. Brilliant. So necessity, clinical necessity. Yeah, clinical. Yeah. Um, whatever to... was on the market um, didn't work for me yeah yeah i mean the map system the map system can can work it is it is tricky though and it's really expensive i think the, that... the main issues with it is ex how expensive it is and the other issue is if you don't clean it straight away afterwards it can get all clogged up and then it's like it's wasted and also the thing that kind of annoyed me is that you plug or you collect the, 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 the MTA or biodentin or whatever you want to use, and you never know what's inside that tube. Mm -hmm. And you can compact it for a minute or so, which is a long time for me at least. More than 0 0.75 seconds in dentistry for me, it's long. I'm, I'm impatient. So, and then you extrude it and a tiny bit comes out and you're, it got me frustrated. So yeah, plus the 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 new the new map system, which is with the uh, night eye uh, uh, tube that goes back into shape, mm. and the pluggers uh, inside the, the plastic ones, they were kind of a single use. So it it, it all becomes very very expensive if if you're doing those type of, of, of things. Yeah, I Again. think in straight, in straight canals was fine, but what happened for apical surgery when you needed to kind of put curves on it? I think that's where they brought in the uh, the, the more the, flexible ones. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're very kind of technique sensitive to use. Yeah. Yeah. With this, with this instrument, with a bit of practice, and I've got cases plenty, um, with a bit of practice with you and any dentist and the nurse, both they need to practice together. Um, literally, you can do the you can do this. Like I, I'll show you a case where during the presentation where a person who never used the, the, the instrument, I, I was driving, I was speaking to him on the phone, I explained to him exactly what to do, and he came out with the clinical. Not nice clinical result. Right, right, right. Okay, go for it. Right. 
So, yeah, uh, just moving on. Why is it not working? So uh, first I wanna go through um, the characteristics or, or the problem that we're facing uh, when we're dealing with an open apex. So first thing, not always will we know that we're dealing with an open apex until we actually dealing with the open apex. So for example, um, uh, a palatal root or a distal root on, on, a, on a six, um, in, in some cases, you, you're dealing with the 70, even 80, especially in the younger uh, uh, patients um, of apical size. So uh, we need to be prepared, okay? If you wanna finish the case safely, you need to be prepared in, in, in practice for dealing with, with a, an open apex. Now, um, the main problem is open apices are not round. Okay, like our GP points. And you cannot create an apical stop. Okay, uh, you cannot sit your GP point safely, uh, short of working length, and not push that GP point beyond working length into the uh, peri apex or the PDL. Uh, another issue is working length is sometimes very difficult. Okay, especially if you're using small files, um, a 10K file on a, an 80 uh, size uh, uh, apex, you're gonna get uh, readings all over the place. So we need to have wider uh, uh, files as well. And also a uh, true tug back uh, of the file is very difficult to achieve, okay? Um, I've had some cases where I felt uh, I was trying to gauge uh, the apical size uh, with the size with a, uh, a file size 100, say. Uh, I felt the resistance, but still radiographically, there was space uh, between the, the file and the canal walls, uh, a case that I'll, I think I'm, I'm showing a bit later. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's all, all quite difficult. So, but we need we we can we can deal with them. We deal with them, so it's not a problem. But what I I, I need to explain uh, to dentists um, is that an open apex cannot be sealed with a GP point and sealer. It it, it just doesn't work. Okay, and if we do try to do that, the complications are going to be much more uh, severe, okay? The case might work short term, the patient is not gonna have pain, but five, 10 years uh, down the line, they're gonna come back with internal resorption, with continuous external resorption of the roots, and sometimes those teeth need to be extracted. So um, we need to create an apex in, in a way, a stop something to seal uh, uh, the, the apical uh, portion of the root. So historically, we, uh, not myself, but dentists in the past, we used um, calcium hydroxide over and over and over again, over long periods of time, months, years, until a, a, a mineralized barrier was created, on top of which we seated the uh, gutta percha. Uh, this is no longer used. Uh, there are regenerative uh, procedures, which are very, very uh, patient-specific and case-specific. Again, difficult to do. Um, or there is the immediate uh, uh, apexification, as we call it, by placing hydraulic cements. And when I say hydraulic cements, it's the whole family of MTA, bioceramic putties, or bioceramic sealers, uh, biodentin, the whole family. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, immediate apexification of a hydraulic cement. So let's have a look at a case. Let's dive straight. Um, this patient was uh, referred because of problems or pain with his low right six. Okay. 
Uh, it was necrotic, it was not responsive to cold, and it was slight, 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 ever so slightly tender to pressure. Now, when I took uh, the pre-op pre -op, uh, radiograph, I saw a large amalgam filling, which is defective, fair enough. Anyway, we're going to replace it with a crown later on. But I also saw advanced external root resorption. But interestingly, there's no periapical pathology on any of the roots. So I decided to take a CBCT scan. And this is the scan. Um, now we can see on the distal root how irregular the pattern of resorption is. So the mesial wall of the distal canal is shorter, much shorter than the distal wall, okay? And again, this is another, it's a 2D image of a 3D image, all right? And also we can see condensing osteitis, which is the same thing, only opposite, obviously, of bone demineralization or bone loss or periapical pathology. That means that this tooth needs a root canal. Okay, now another view of the distal root at uh, uh, very close to the apex, we can see that the, the canal is oval. Now, if I have a round GP point and I have an oval canal, so if I use one GP point, I'll manage to seal maybe half of the canal. But if I use two, there's still a gap there. And that gap, even if I use sealer, eventually it will leak, okay? So I cannot seal this type of uh, canal with a, a GP point and sealer all by itself. I need to use an apexification procedure or apical plug. So what I did is, uh, the mesial canals, I seal them in the normal fashion, um, warm vertical compaction of gutta percha and sealer. And the distal uh, system, as you can see, it's a system. It's more complex than one uh, uh, oval um, uh, canal. I sealed it with a bioceramic putty in cold vertical compaction. So basically, in essence, I put a bioceramic pellets and progressively fill the canal with these uh, cylindrical pellets. Okay, a technique which I'll show again in a second. Now, uh, this is the pellet former. Uh, it has eight holes. Okay, I don't know if you can see. Can you see the mouse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has eight holes. And the holes are of that uh, increasing diameters from 0 0.8, sorry, 0 0.8 of a millimeter to 1.5 millimeters. So basically, uh, apical size 80 to apical size 150. It has a wide range of apical sizes. All right. Now, by placing a um, um, putty or bioceramic material, any bioceramic material into those holes, eventually uh, used properly, you will get a two to three millimeter uh, cylindrical pellet, okay? Which you can take and deliver it apically or into a perforation wherever you want in a very uh, consistent way, okay? Now, compared to the Lee block, which creates a more rectangular or a square uh, in cross-section uh, pellets, uh, which again, if you're using a, um, a hand plugger, you will never get them in a 180 degrees or continue in a continuous manner. They will always come in an angle, okay? 
that, that's another problem. Uh, the lead block is it's quite easy to use. You just uh, fill the, the grooves with, um, with bioceramic material and you uh, flick them out and they're more uh, uh, appropriate for um, perpendicular filling like a retro filling in, in, in an AP sector, okay? Uh, by the way, this uh, uh, pellet former has, if you look uh, on the side, you can see four uh, grooves just like the um, lee block. You also have an, an endodontic ruler if you'd like. It helps sometimes to measure your plugger. And uh, as I said, you can use them. Uh, you can use this uh, a pellet former for APCs from, from 60 to about 150, okay? You can use them on perforations, apexification, regenerative endodontics, if you'd like, uh, vital pulp therapies, pulp capping direct or indirect, and also for uh, uh, surgical retrofilling, okay? Now, it's basically a push or a press to open mechanism, all right? Now, as I said, from a vital pulp therapy or pulp capping to uh, retrofilling in, in uh, surgeries, the whole variety, wherever you need a bioceramic, biodentin, MTA, you got it. Just that instrument does them all. Now, let's have a look at the case uh, step by step. Okay. Uh, we're going to concentrate here. I did both the upper left one and upper left two but we're gonna concentrate on the upper left one, if you don't mind. So first, we're going to gauge the apex. What size is the apex, okay? In this situation, it's quite easy to see it's size 100, all right? Now, after we gauge the apex with the K-file, we take a plugger and we make sure that that plugger binds get stuck about two millimeters from our working length, okay? The reason is those two millimeters are gonna be the space for the pellet, okay? Now we need to make sure that the size 100 is smaller than the size of the plugger. So basically, I need to make sure that the canal is conical. It has taper, okay? It's 100 at the tip, but let's say 120, 130, uh, two millimeters from the tip. Make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah, good. Now, everything that I said, we verify radiographically, okay? And this is the case that I wanted to show you. Clearly, there is space between the canal walls and the file. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just friction or resistant, the, the, the rigidness of, of the file not going through. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the apex is bigger than 100, but the 100 went to working length, okay? In this case, I instead of a plugger, I use the GP point. OK, uh, you don't have to have a plugger to use this, a hand plugger. You can use GP point. So in this case, I trimmed to fit a GP point um, about two millimeters from working length. OK, and I verified it radiographically as well. I'm not relying just on my uh, apex locator. In those cases, I always take radiographs and plenty of them. After we've uh, measured uh, and uh, trimmed and whatever we did, uh, we chose our plugger or GP point. We transfer the measurement, the apical measurement or the diameter of the plugger or GP point into our, uh, onto our uh, pellet form. The, the smallest hole uh, that the plugger or GP point goes through that's the uh, size or the, the diameter of the plugger, okay? Just like that. So it goes through nicely. So now I know that the plugger 
is at this case, diameter of 1.4 or 140, okay? And I take a note of that. If I'm using a GP point, the same thing. Uh, for GP points, I would recommend using tweezers and not fingers. They're just in this manner. Basically, you create your own flexible uh, uh, plugger, okay? In this case, the diameter of the plugger is 1.2 or 120. Now, if you're using a mix, um, um, a non pre mix, so you need to mix it, uh, for example, biodentine or uh, BioRoot RCS, or if you're using uh, um, a pre mixed putty, which to be honest with you, I, I prefer, um, you place it into the, the holes, okay? Just like that. Now, when you place the cement into the holes, make sure you press on it, okay? You can fill them from both sides and have ready a sterile gauze, okay? Um, no, no point in using any papers or anything like that, which are dirty. Uh, you've just uh, cleaned the canals you want to work as sterile as possible. So use please uh, for this uh, to wipe any excess and also compact. When you're wiping this way, you're actually even more compacting the material into the, into the holes, okay? And now you take the plugger that you pre-measured, you know, uh, uh, you push into the, into the uh, instrument and you open, and release the plugger, okay? And in this way, it defies even gravity. You can work with it, you can play it around. It's not a problem, okay? It's not gonna drop anywhere, okay? Um, so first you push the plugger out of, into and out of the uh, pellet former and only then you release, uh, press to release the plugger and take it out, okay? If you are using a GP point, uh, and I would recommend using those type of GP points, uh, the colored ones, because they're more rigid. It's easier to push them and uh, release the material from the, um, from the pellet former. Just in this way, same, same thing. This is from the actual case, by the way. Okay, take it out, there you go. Okay, so you get, about two to three millimeter of a uh, pellet. Going back to the tooth, all you need to do is place the pellet inside the canal with a light apical uh, pressure, not too much, not violently, take a few seconds. Okay, make sure you're centered in the canal as well. And uh, I like to use paper points uh, or the actual plugger to lightly compact uh, the uh, bioceramic apically, just in this way. You see, I take the GP point, put it in, the, um, in an apical uh, direction, and that's it. The pellet is gone, it's at, at the apex, okay? It's nowhere else. It can only be at the apex. Yeah. I mean, that's so nice and clean, isn't it? So quick. Yeah. Yeah. That's another advantage of now I'm using a size 100, okay, paper point. And you see, I'm lightly, lightly tapping, lightly tapping, not, not violently, not pressing, no, lightly tapping, tuck, 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 like that. Okay. Now I filled another, uh, another hole a bit bigger. So if I use the size uh, 1.2, let's say, I'm putting in 1.3 and maybe 1.4. And again, I've got another pellet ready. So it, it's all quick, I take it, put it again. I know where it is, okay? Also uh, just interesting to, show the axis cavity is as wide as the GP point. 
It does. You don't need to go wider. Okay, and I go past again. They're already be traumatized as well, so they'll have quite a big kind of pulp chamber. Yeah, but my access cavity is as small as I need it to be. I don't need to open the tooth too much. Uh, not that it's gonna, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a very uh, big believer in incisors to be small because they're, you know, uh, quite uh, sturdy teeth anyway. Uh, but again, you, you, the access cavity is as, as small as you need it to be, okay? After a few, uh, two, three uh, pellets that you've compacted them, uh, I take a, ver a verification radiograph to make sure that I've got the, although I know, uh, I just wanna make sure I didn't push too much, okay? Because sometimes you're gonna get a bit of extrusion, only a bit, a bit of extrusion. But I wanna make sure also that I got a homogeneous uh, fill. Okay, and if I need to re-intervene, I'll compact a bit more or I'll add a bit more uh, of bioceramic into uh, the apical portion. But all you need is about five, five millimeters of uh, apical plug. Okay, and uh, in this case, uh, I used biodentity. Okay, I decided to use biodentity. Now, um, this is the final obturation. Okay, I've, I've filled both of uh, both of the teeth. Uh, I filled a bit more with biodentine. The only reason that I did that is because biodentine, you get a bucket of it. So I just didn't want to throw it away. I just used it, okay? Uh, but all you need is, uh, if we go back, that, that's roughly how much you need to create a good apical seal in an open apex case, okay? Um, backfilled, I, uh, after that, you can use uh, your uh, warm vertical uh, compaction uh, uh, technique, um, bioceramic uh, sealer, if you'd like to inject it, whatever makes you happy, that's fine. Okay. Um, let's have a look at a couple of more cases. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah go for it. Okay, good. So uh, here we have an upper right one and upper right two with, um, the upper right two has internal resorption. Okay, uh, the upper right one, I think it's external resorption and internal resorption. I'm not sure to this date, I'm not sure. Um, patient in his fifties, he had trauma some years ago and he has a draining abscess from both of the teeth. He was told teeth need to come out. To be perfectly honest with you, with the upper right one, I agree. Prognosis is not great with this one. Uh, but, you know, he wanted to save his teeth. Uh, he had already crowns on, the, on some of the teeth. He wanted to keep the, uh, his appearance. He didn't want to have implants. He definitely didn't want to have any dentures. Um, so, you know, I said, let's, let's try. So first visit, uh, so the treatment plan was to first perform non-surgical treatment, most probably with bioceramics, and then go back and repair the upper right one uh, surgically if needs be, okay? Uh, we're talking, this case was from about four years ago. Um, before I had a CT, a CT scanner. Um, nowadays, I would scan this case, but yeah, that, that time I, yeah. I think nearly all trauma cases benefit from Sorry? scanning. Sorry? I think so oh, many yeah, trauma yeah, yeah. cases no, no, benefit no. from scans. I think the more you they, kind of do everybody scan, gets Yeah. So uh, at the first visit, it's the X-ray on your left, uh, the one with the uh, rubber dam clamp. Um, all I did is went into the teeth, uh, obviously no instrumentation whatsoever, gallons of bleach, okay? Uh, I was very careful on the upper uh, right one, not to extrude, but still I used bleach. Um, and I filled uh, the, dried and filled the canals with calcium hydroxide, 
Okay. Now, on the second visit, uh, a very simple procedure, remove the GP, the GP from the upper right one was very loose in the canal, just a bit of engaging with the head stroom and just pulled it out. Uh, a lot of uh, irrigation and I placed a calcium hydroxide. On his next visit, how did you I place another hydroxide so well? Because often it's quite difficult to place it that well compacted. With an um, uh, endoactivator. Yeah. Um, I, I extruded a bit on the yeah, uh, okay. upper, yeah. Now, I was kind of disheartened because I saw that all the calcium hydroxide from the upper right one was gone, okay? I was kind of, yeah. <sighs> This case is not going well. <laughs> By the way, at this point on his second visit, when I saw him, he was fine. He didn't have any pain. He didn't have any, any discomfort, nothing. And um, I don't remember if the abscesses disappeared or not. But anyway, there was no point in redressing. So I just went for it, OK? And uh, I filled both of them with bioceramic putty. Uh, same technique that I showed you earlier, okay? Now, um, the calcium hydroxide on the upper right too, I couldn't get rid of. I didn't even intend to do that. Um, but I wasn't very happy about the extrusion of the bioceramic from the upper right one. Uh, to be honest with you, back in those days, I was quite worried. I, I said, oh, the patient's going to have pain and so on and so forth. Um, just another uh, thing, please note the irregular shape of the upper right tube. Okay, it's becoming narrower and then getting bigger. And, and to be honest with you, it wasn't very difficult to fill. Uh, it looks like difficult to fill something like that, but it wasn't. With the pellet former, bioceramic, you just pellet after pellet after pellet, compaction, just take your time, take radiographs, obviously. Um, but yeah, um, looks, looks okay. So I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't very happy with the uh, extrusion on the upper right one. And I said, look, it's not going to go well. Now, um, I saw him six months later. He was fine. And then COVID came um, and he came back for a different issue. And I said, ah, oh, you remember? Yeah, 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 I remember. I still got my teeth there. And this is about two years later, okay? So those teeth are fine. There's no abscess there. The, uh, there's no PAP on the upper right too. The, perforation or whatever there was on the upper right one, uh, the radio lucency is, is definitely getting smaller. Um, both teeth are functional. They're not painful. They're fine. Okay. They don't look great on a radiograph, but hey-ho, there you go. You're just trying to so, yeah. in these cases. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I told him, I told him, he knows, Prognosis wasn't great, okay? But to this day, as far as I'm aware, he still has them. And that's four or five years down the line. Amazing, amazing. Now, another case, um, similar, I, I wanna say. Again, poor prognosis teeth. Um, upper left two had some surgery many years ago, many years ago, uh, but no <laughs> root filling whatsoever. OK, and I've been seeing those cases now. Um, obviously, the upper left one has also uh, an infection and we treated that as well. But my plan was to put bioceramic up to the uh, amalgam uh, plug. And then go surgically. Take the, uh, uh, the uh, amalgam plug out. And, and that's about it. So I root filled it. Uh, the upper left one I root filled with the a normal uh, fashion. Uh, got the purchase sealer. The upper left two, 
yeah, I root filled with bioceramic. And I said, let's wait a few months and, you know, and the patient came six months later for his surgery. And that's the result. No need for surgery, sir. Okay. Um, the abscess is gone. And what's the point? I'm going to make the root a bit shorter. The healing. So that's, that's fine. Okay. So in a lot of cases, when I use bioceramic sealers or cements, um, I got out of surgery. Okay. When I was literally planning to do surgery. So if you fill the apex in a, a consistent way, uh, in a, a predictable way and a very good way, I think you, you're going to, you know, skip the surgery, uh, and, you know, in a lot of cases. Okay. Um, one last case, one last case, I promise. Uh, a child, young child, I think he's, uh, was about 10, something like that, and had tr some trauma and then and came with a big abscess uh, to his uh, general dentist. And uh, the general dentist said, yeah, let's access the tooth and access the tooth and saw the complexity of the case. And he decided, said, no, I can't root fill the tooth. Please go and see uh, Sagi. And he sent him to me. What you see is the uh, calcium hydroxide dressing, okay? So all I did is took the dressing out, uh, bleach, 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 and root filled it with a bioceramic putty, okay? Now, I know it looks a bit short of the apical constriction, if you'd like to call it that, um, but my apex locator was adamant that that is where and again, it's a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional case uh, or a situation. So we don't know what's going buckle. Yeah, or absolutely. And especially for these cases with open apices, it's like uh, when you look at the combi MCTs, uh, you always see that there's discrepancies in the walls. So yeah. Never always kind of take your apex locator reading over your radiographic over your radiographic image. Exactly. I'm, I'm, yeah, the more I get experience with those, I take with a pinch of salt. But now um, I root filled it, same visit. Um, when when the, the child saw me, he was already symptom free. So I didn't uh, need to um, do another dressing visit. Usually I, I would recommend dressing visits with those cases. Uh, the apical size was about 90, uh, irrigation plenty of bleach, okay, as much as you can. Obviously, uh, two, three millimeters short of uh, working length, not to push bleach beyond the apex, um, the safety uh, measures uh, as usual. Yeah, we just have a question. And, uh, just someone's asking, you didn't use GP, only bioceramic in that case. Bioceramic. Okay, only bioceramic. There's no, the, 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 there's no GP point to fit that canal, okay? Mm. It's a very, very wide canal. It's taper, it's a tube, basically. If you look at it, it's a tube. So the GP point is not going to help me in any way or form. Just by a ceramic. Yeah. Um, um, just, it's another question. Can these cases be done in one visit if it's dry or if there's no pus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm a... I'm a a true believer of uh, single visits. So, so patient symptom free. You can dry the canal. Go for it. Okay. If you don't intend to do anything else with your calcium hydroxide, then um, yeah, go for it. But again, the patient already had a first visit with his dentist. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So, um, Finished, ask the patient, please come back in six months. And in six months, I took an x-ray. Uh, obviously, he was, uh, not obviously, but he was symptom-free. Everything was okay. Um, as, as you can see, the periapical lesion disappeared. 
but also something else. I could see something not quite right there. Is it, at, at this point I was thinking, is this the bioceramic leaking? And what I can see is a, uh, some uh, radio opacity there. What is going on? Okay, so I was happy with the, uh, or fairly happy with the result at that time. But I asked the patient, please come back and see me in six months. So a year later. And a year later, I see this. Again, he was symptom free, but I'm pretty sure that that's an apex. I'm pretty sure that's mineralization, complete almost. I can see the PDL, I'm showing you. I can see the PDL area, so I know it's not replacement resorption. It didn't have any um, metallic sound or anything like that. Um, so I would want to call it unintentional regenerative endodontics. Okay, I didn't intend to, but that's what happened. Okay, those type of materials, bioceramics, are very, very... Um, not only biocompatible, but they're bioinductive, okay? They produce a reaction, a positive reaction from the body, okay? The, the bone, uh, the dentine, the cementum, the whole, uh, the whole shebang, okay? We, we if they're create, used properly. Yeah, we need to create conditions for it to heal around it. Yeah. There's just a few questions there on that point now, if you don't mind, I'll just go through it quickly. Yeah, 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 uh, sure. Uh, so can the same be done with MTA? Yep. Okay. It's, um, so I would, say can I just say something? Yeah. I wouldn't use, the reason that I don't use MTA, it's not because uh, it's not a good material. Okay. It's very good material. The only disadvantage is that it discolors teeth, bone, gum, everything especially the gray one, but even the white, the so-called white one. Uh, I went into uh, previous MTAs uh, and it's all black, like you would use uh, silver uh, amalgam fillings. Okay, yeah. so it discolors teeth. Yeah, really. yeah. Uh, so there's another one. Uh, will it not be hard for retreatment if this is only bioceramic sealer? So, when you put bioceramic sealer, you say goodbye to retreatment. Okay, is it non retreatable? The answer is no, it is retreatable. If you take ultrasonics, you can break the whole thing into bits, flush them away. But those cases, um, you've done the best you can, there's no point in going back non surgically. So, um the, the answer is yes, they are retreatable, but there's no point in doing that. Just go straight for surgery. If you place bioceramic, uh, if I was to do surgery on that tooth, it would take me exactly 10 seconds. Local anesthetic, raise a flap, uh, uh, reject two, three millimeters from the apex, and that's about it. I don't need to do retro prep, retrofill, which are, uh, these are the two, uh, most complicated things uh, in um, apical surgery. Uh, there's another question here. What's the long? What's the time rate of washout? Sorry. Uh, I presume they're asking about washout of the materials. It's like, is it possible that they'll wash out? Yeah, I, I mean, if you MTA as well, isn't it? Rather than the um, the premixed ones. Sorry. Uh, like the washout of MCA. Ah, washout. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not concerned about... If you can dry the canal and uh, you can see that um, you don't have any uh, bleeding or a, uh, fluid coming out from the periapex into the, into the canal, there's not going to be washout. Okay? If you are worried about washout, just take... And I don't do that very often. Uh, just take a bit of uh, collagen and um, hemocollagen, uh, put it apically, and that will stop the bleeding apically. 
and then you place your uh, bioceramic biodentine on top, okay? But yes, as I said, the only two um, um, situation where I don't finish in one, and I'm, I'm sure Daniel will agree with me, is where the patient have acute symptoms. I'm talking about screaming his head off, um, their head off. Uh, and if you can't dry the canals, okay? Because you're worried about the washout. The washout of um, uh, bioceramic putty will be much less than bioceramic sealer, okay? Because bioceramic sealer is more flowable than, um, than the putty, less washout resistance. But if you look at, uh, actually you, Daniel, you did a, a nice video on an apisectomy. And you can see uh, Daniel squirts water on top of his uh, uh, bioceramic plug um, and it doesn't wash up. So if it resists that squirt of water, that, that doesn't happen in the body, okay? Because so. that's under high pressure. Even then, it, you can drill it within a couple of minutes. So it's like- Yeah, can, yeah. Um, uh, that's, that's why, I mean, I've, tr I've tried a lot of the different putties and sealers, and that's why it's like having one that has a, a fairly quick initial set makes a big difference in terms of just predictability for just not being afraid of washout. Whereas when Absolutely. I use- MTA in apical surgery, I could never do that. So it used to wash out. If I was to spray ah, it, MTA, up, it would all wash out straight away. Soup. Become soup. Yeah, it's it, it likes water in the first four hours of its life. Yeah. It's hydrophilic. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, uh, I mean, I had lots of issues with apical surgeries when I would go back into them years later. The material just wasn't set because the blood would infiltrate into the actual material. It hadn't set and it was still just soft when, when I went back in again. Um, so lots of them still worked, even though I'd done it like that. But there's the ones that did fail, there was material failure in there as well. So now I wait until I get that initial kind of set for the first two or three minutes. And then, then I kind yeah. of... To totally agree, especially in apisectomies where you know you're going to get bleeding, you know you, it may wash away. Just, yeah, wait a couple of minutes. Just make sure it stays there. Those two, three minutes, and then that's about it. Yes, totally agree, 100%. Uh, so one of the major reasons for failure in these teeth is root fractures. A uh, study shows that biodentin doesn't strengthen the root. How about bioceramic plug and then fiber post and composite to increase the strength of the root? It's from Mitra. To be perfectly honest, I don't think there is ever a material that actually strengthens teeth, okay? The only material that actually helps teeth break a bit better is a fiber post, which transmits the, but it's indirect. It, there's no, you, you cannot prevent something. The, the, even with the chemical, uh, the, with bioceramics, you got chemical connection, okay? Uh, the bioceramic, biodentin MTA, chemically, uh, it bonds to the tooth, but it's still, the tooth itself needs to, you can't, you can't prevent fractures. So yeah, the, none of them. The, the answer is E, none of the above, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so sorry for interrupting you there. There was just lots of, you've obviously stimulated a lot of questions with your- No, 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 for sure, for sure, 100%. So, uh, are you, have you any more, is that, is that you done? Uh, no, I've got the, uh, yeah, just perfect. a quick, yeah. Per yeah. Yeah, yeah, so perfect. not only apical plugs, uh, perforation repair, okay. Um, so you were looking for a canal, um, it wasn't there. Uh, all you need to do is and identify the perforation, okay? Clean it. I use a, a bit of ultrasonic, not, on the, not, on, not in the hole, okay? Not in the actual perforation, but about a half a millimeter from it just to flush all the debris away, okay? If there was debris. Uh, I use EDTA, chlorhexidine. You can actually use bleach as long as you're careful. And then exactly as you would do with an apical plug, you gauge it, okay? With a plugger, with a GP point, okay? And you transfer that to the 
pellet former and you create a pellet. And again, in this case, I use biodentin. It only takes a few minutes, okay? So, okay, now with biodentin, uh, you can see how I do it surgically, okay? I do it not surgically, but uh, I do it very, very accurately. I don't need to block canals. In this case, the canals were root filled already, but um, I don't need to block canals or anything like that. Uh, I can just do it. Uh, if you're using biodentin, you need to wait 12 minutes. If you're using uh, the one that you use, uh, Daniel, what's the name of it, please? Uh, one filled positive. Yeah, you can use after three, four minutes, five minutes. Yeah, I think it's you, when you like when you put the reason I like that putty. I've used so many of the different putties is that you can just work. You don't have to just sit back and wait. I just used to get so frustrated with the kind of the longer. Exactly. Uh, this is a, a, a film I think from two, three years ago. Um, I was showing a perforation uh, to somebody. Um, yeah, so you can when you're using the pellet former. Um, you place uh, the, the material exactly where you need it. You don't need to block any canals or anything like that with paper or GP points. And yeah, if you're using bioceramic putty, which has a high uh, washout resistance, you can continue work. You, can, you and, and you're doing actually the best thing for the patient because as soon as you repair the perforation, the better. Yeah. I think okay. people get scared of perforations. They assume that if they perforate the tooth, that the tooth is condemned. But I mean, if you repair the perforation straight away after it happens, I think the prognosis isn't, isn't bad at all. There, there is the triangle, just a couple of words. There is the triangle. Um, you've got time, you've got size and uh, location. Okay, the size of the perforation. It's more the time that goes by. So if you perforated the tooth, you need to repair it there and then. If you repair it there and then, the maximum that you're gonna lose in percentage of success is 5% maybe, I, I, I don't know, but maybe five. Okay, let's say five. You need to tell the patient something, okay, 5%. But if you start dressing it with, even with calcium hydroxide and until the patient sees a specialist or some months go by, that, percentage drops down and down and down and down. So if you, as a general practitioner, if you're doing endo and you've perforated, we all perforated, um, at least me, I perforate. Not last week, but a couple of weeks ago, I- Next week. Yeah. Next week, exactly. Every two or three weeks. Um, and I, sorry, somebody said something? I think there's just someone going off me. No, ah, okay. All right, okay, yeah. Um, if you repair the perforation there and then, chances are that nothing is going to happen, okay? Um, so, yeah, it's useful also for perforation. Just a couple of tips, no, a couple, maybe four or five or six uh, tips and tricks. Uh, by the way, this is the case that I mentioned. Um, it's on my case. Um, a dentist uh, did this retreatment. Uh, first thing, uh, first time using the pellet former. And I think it looks amazing. Yeah, fantastic. Okay. And all I did is just sat with him on the phone for maybe 10, 15 minutes, explained to him exactly what to do, just like I did today. And he did that. Yeah. Um, so top tips, how to repair a, a, or do apical plugs or repair perforations with the pellet former. So there is a short learning curve, okay? So if you feel that you want to use plastic blocks, use plastic bo blocks. Uh, but the main thing is use uh, the pellet former first time uh, with your team, okay? With your nurse or nurses, show them what to do, explain to them what you're doing. They'll understand better and they'll perform better as well, okay? Um, use the putty that you like, okay? Or use the... Um, um, the material that you like that works best in your hands. Okay, everybody's different. Um, I I I love biodentin today. 
I'm more of a, a pre-mixed putty person, um, but this is me today, all right? Uh, use whatever works for you. Um, when you're dealing with an open apex uh, and you're ready to operate, make sure you got everything on the table. So you got the pellet former, uh, you got the, the pluggers, the GP points, uh, the sterile goes, everything is ready. Okay, so you don't need to, because sometimes the material sets and it can frustrate you and you, you need to go back in and make sure everything is ready. Okay, are we ready? I asked my nurse, you got everything? Yeah, fine. Now let's, let's do this. And literally I can fill a canal um, upper central in a few minutes. Okay, because I got everything ready and the nurse knows what she's doing. Um, in a very, very large canals, for example, the one that I showed you earlier, um, you can also use the backside of the GP point. Okay, you got GP point, it has a, a, a wide side and a narrow side. If you're dealing with very, very large canals and you wanna use the paper point, use the other side as well. It works just as well, okay? And I think that's me, I'm done. If there are any questions or anything, uh, it's just one or two more. Yeah, it's one or two more questions coming in here. Um, can you place two millimeters of putty for apical plug in very curvy canals? Sure. In those situations, okay. I mean, the putty will go wherever you want it to go, uh, but if you have a curved canal to start with, from from uh, from start to finish, use gutta percha. Get a perch of bends as a plugger, I mean. Mm. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We have these flexible plastic tips now that actually can be quite good for that as well because they're size 30 and they're flexible, but they're also rigid. So they're much more rigid than uh, GP. So it's easier to kind of place apical plugs with those and they cost like two pounds and they're, re and they're autoclavable as well. So they, they are- There you um, go. Uh, it's a really nice, easy way. And the thing is, well, when they're, you can attach them onto your ultrasonic unit. So it's actually quite easy to use them. They're like almost easier than like a hand plug or two. Uh, it's another question here from Alison. If, if you clean the perf with chlorhexidine, is there then a problem using sodium hypochlorite after in canals if they're not filled with precipitate formed? So, I mean, if you... Um... If I perforated uh, a tooth, what I will do, I will finish the root filling, okay? And then deal with the perforation, if I can, if the perforation is not preventing me from doing my job, okay? Uh, if the perforation is preventing me from doing my job, I, yeah, you could. All you need to do is if you flush everything, if you flush the chlorhexidine uh, with saline or EDTA, and dry and then use bleach, no, nothing's gonna happen, okay? But yeah, first uh, I would say finish your root filling. If the perforation is on the side and you got the two canals and you're not gonna restab the, the perforation with your files or something like that, deal with that later. Mm, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, can, you, you, can you reuse the bioceramic putty compules? If so, how long can you keep using it for and in what way? Oh yeah, ah, it means uh, the, um, yes, you can reuse them. Yeah, uh, all I do when I use the capsules, um, I extrude a bit on my pellet former compact, extrude a bit compact, extrude a bit compact, put it back on so it's kind of non-clinical. So it, it doesn't go in the patient's mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I wipe them with the, um, um, whatever cleaning um, uh, disinfectant wipes or whatever and put them uh, clean them and then uh, um, dry them well and then put them back in the bag yeah that's perfect uh, sorry I'm just replying to, to questions here as well uh... ah have you ever tried regenerative yes I did a couple yeah I don't do that very often, but yeah, because the I don't get these cases, but yes, I've done, yeah. Same thing. Um, 
All you need to do is create some uh, bleeding inside the canal as much as you can. And then you place uh, your bioceramic material uh, until uh, you get to the pulp uh, if, or wherever you, you know, the CJ. And then you put your um, obturation material, whichever it is, composite or GIC. I prefer using GIC. Um, and, the first, and then I replace it with a composite. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's, I mean, it's just such a, such a conservative treatment by trying to retain all the teeth. And especially for young kids, I think the regenerative uh, capacity is amazing. So if we can just re remove the kind of source of infection and allow things to heal, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's potentially a really nice option. And all your options are open over time anyway. I've, had, yeah. I've done a good few regenerative cases. Uh, one of them has failed, most of them haven't. And the one that failed, you just redo it and, and just do a plug. So I mean, it's-, it's uh, Exactly very little to lose apart from the time exactly um, and uh, and now with having all these platformers and stuff the time actually isn't a big issue it's like it's very very quick to to seal these up i mean there is a guy who's doing them in a single visit uh is uh, out there on facebook i I have a bit of a you know going from uh, the triple antibiotic Pace to calcium hydroxide. I mean, wh what is your view, by the way, about the triple antibiotic paste? Yeah, no, I don't use that. I just use no. hypochloride and uh, I do use EDTA. And um, I do, I, I mean, it's on feel. And I mean, I do I do some of them in a single visit. I do some of really? them. Yeah. Uh, but the last one I did that failed, I did it in a single visit and it didn't work. So it's... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just I, a controlling infection. I mean, it's like yeah, you look at these cases, and you go, okay, I've got down to length. I mean, you don't even need to instrument. Uh, I mean, you've used ultrasonic irrigation; it looks so clean, and you're thinking like, how am I going to ever get it cleaner than this? Um, but it's um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it depends because in young patients as well, they can have like bigger dentinal tubules, and it can be actually technically harder to actually clean those canals than than kind of smaller canals. Um, but in general, they work really well, really, really well. Yeah. Like the, vast, the vast majority I've done have been absolutely fine. I, I, I just, they, they don't come to me. I think they go to the hospital straight. So, you know, uh, the few that came to me, I, I did from all of the, you know, children. And to be honest with you, some of them, I do them for free. Um, I, I've done a, a couple of cases that touch wood. I mean, they're, 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 they're still there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, um, was, especially for kids, if you can just even get them to their twenties where they still have the tooth, then it's like as a space you got it. You get, a a, bit, you get a little bit more kind of dentine kind of structure there. I think that's the key because it's as as Mitra said, it's all about kind of root fractures going forward. So if you can try and just get them to be that little bit stronger, it really can make such a difference. Yeah. 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 Uh, Okay, so tons, uh, Mitra, again, tons of EDTA needed apparently as it releases growth fractures. Sorry? Uh, so Mitra's saying tons of EDTA apparently needed as it releases growth factors. Yeah, there is something to do with, um, there is a new protocol now where they say uh, instead of the last uh, irrigation with the sodium hypochlorite, use EDTA. Um, yeah, yeah. I think there's this stuff about EDTA and like vital pulp therapy as well, where it's like uh, within the dentine, it's like there's, if you can release those mediators, it can help stimulate, stimulate um, kind of factors to help remineralization and stuff as well. So it's a really, really interesting uh, approach. And that's why I think endo has gone through an amazing time. It's an amazing time to be an endodontist. We have like yeah, access to agree. technology. It's like the treatments are so predictable. It's like we've got, it's a really, really amazing time to be doing endo. Um, Paul is asking where we get the pellet formers from. So they're, they're all on the Tooth Saver site. Um, mm -hmm. We have just released then the pellet former with the accompanying pellets as well, or with the accompanying uh, pluggers, uh, just to make it easier. So you can use GP, you can use plastic tips, you can have pluggers now that 
fit they match exactly the holes so it just makes it even easier to put the pellets um and we're going to do a special thing for everyone who watches the webinar tonight where it's an additional 20 percent off if you just type in pellet 20 you get 20 percent off it too um and um yeah i think it's it's uh it's just again as you say it's like it saves you time anything that saves you time clinically is so yes. worth it and it's like a nice simple protocol to get you to to have a really predictable result i mean if you try and do that with the old ways of trying to pack in mta with with, with uh, just yeah blind, it's so messy it takes so long it's like if there's a void there you have to try and wash it all out again and then you can end up extruding some trying to remove it and it's uh, it's just so frustrating it's so technically difficult to get it right oh yeah um, Today you got everything in a capsule. What, what do you need more? What, what more do you need? Keep keep life simple. Exactly. Uh, keep, give me. When I went to dental school, by the way, I, I didn't know about teeth. I had no. I thought the teeth. I, I didn't even know a tooth has a canal inside. I didn't know it's hollow inside. I didn't know. So they told me, you know, when you're using composite or white filling, you need to use rubber dam. And that's why, well, when we, ah, because the, the material doesn't like uh, water, saliva. I said, are you serious? The, after 2000 years, this is what you managed to invent, something that doesn't like water to use in the mouth. So, you know, I, I wasn't a dentist then, I was a dental student, first year, second year, I don't know what. Now we have, as you said, it's so exciting. You got everything almost. What else can we just sells to the, the, the next stage is sells to put in the and regenerate from, from zero. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the materials now are amazing. You got, you got a plethora of materials. You can choose hundreds of materials for, for doing the same job. But if you can find, as I said, you can find your the material that works for you the best. You're sorted. I think for the next 10 years. Absolutely, absolutely. Listen, thank you so much. We've been, I mean, that time has really thank gone you. on so quickly. You've been over an hour there. Thank you so much for giving up time in your evening to talk to us. Thank I mean, you. Thank you for having me. On your invention, I think it's like, it's brilliant to kind of see clinical endodontists taking the time and the effort. I know how much work goes into doing all these things um and it's uh yeah no yeah. just congratulations on everything that you've done thank you so much for a brilliant presentation it's so thank nice to see the clinical applications of it and i'm sure we've gone through loads of questions already if anyone else has questions they can post it on the facebook group and we'll, we'll get back to it that way as well um so we'll put it up okay. on, we have a recording done so we'll send that to, out to everybody on on the mailing list and uh yeah again thank you so much okay thank you Amazing. Bye. Nice to see. We don't get to see everybody because everyone's got their video off. But it's uh, thank you for all the questions, and uh, I'll hope to see you at a BES event or at some event that we'll do in London soon. Amazing. Okay. Thank you, thank guys. You. Bye. 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 Bye.